Hello, this is Alan Wheeler, and my apologies if you watch this video before I'm able to cut off the delay in the beginning there. This is my channel where I've been talking about spirituality and the tarot, and recently making a playlist. This might be the last one in the playlist, uh, number nine of the Morgan Moments, when I brought out my statue here, um, recently acquired of the Morgan with her crow and drawn sword. And the title of this uh, video will be something like uh, When Source is the Message. So I need my disclaimer once again. Um, that when I refer to personified deity in the way that I do, um, it could be aspects of the higher self, of personality, of source or spirit or Holy Spirit, uh, what have you, archetypes. So, <clears throat> um, I work through that, um, in my previous videos, but one way I think of my use is just that we feel free uh, to say the sun rose today, and we don't go into the elaborate uh, detail of always saying uh, the earth rotated so that the sun became visible, and so on. So, um, Although I think deeply about these things, it's a uh, way of speaking and way of thinking um, and just the need for a disclaimer um, is a good red flag to uh, the issues at stake and the issues at hand. So from my own relative perspective, um, it's very important. We can't, we can't dismiss uh, whatever we, we want to call this um, process, this, this experience, because having a sacred space, or if you prefer to call it a, a place of mindfulness, uh, from my relative perspective, it's very important to ourselves, um, to have a kind of place outside of ourselves, um, whether you want to call it the astral, the abstract, Plato's world of forms, um, what have you. We need the, um, the place of leverage for ourselves to get outside of the rat race. It's most therapeutic and it's most useful for working in the arts and sciences. Um, so, <laughs> end of preaching. <laughs> um, so, without further ado, <laughs> yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday now, I awoke with very strong vibrations um, here in uh, what I believe Buddhists call the Anja Chakra and um, in my back and solar plexus area. And without going into more detail, they were uh, feelings and vibrations and more that I as associate particularly with Odin, the energy of Odin, and the Morrigan. Much stronger than usual. And along with it came the strong idea and sense that I should do five card tarot spreads um, to help me define what, what this impulse, this urgency was. I, I just sensed within myself that this would be a way I could formulate um, what this impulse, what I, what I was being led to do from that perspective to use 
that vocabulary. And um, through working through the spreads and some things that I'll put on the um, Cartomancy forum, more detail perhaps, and put the link below, but I did feel um, that maybe I am being led to join an online group more deeply. And um, I won't go into further details because now we're to um, yesterday, I again felt the strong energy and vibrations, but this time without a clear uh, sense or leading of something to do. So I'll tell an old um, bit of business from Steve Martin's comedy act in the 1970s. Some of you may remember this. Um, he did mental juggling. So he's on stage in front of his crowd and he says, I'm now going to juggle mentally. And you see him going through some mental contortions. And suddenly he says, whoops. And so, of course, um, with his comedic timing and expressive ability, it's very funny that he can't even juggle um, in his ideal mind state there. Uh, but in the uh, heat of the moment, in the uh, the morning um, spiritual experience, I did a mental pendulum. And so in my mind, I imagined holding uh, a pendulum as I would uh, physically. And asked a few questions and just let it swing mentally. Uh, so I said, am, am I being called to do some altar work today? And in my imagination, uh, it swung in a circle, which in, all, always indicates to me maybe, or a, 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 neither yes nor no, maybe the answer is more complex, maybe um, it's uncertain. Uh, so I asked again, does it mean I'm supposed to be waiting on signs of so some kind, looking for synchronicities? Again, maybe, perhaps, I'm on my mental pendulum. Should I be just be open? Maybe there's a message coming from someone or a direction coming some other way. Again, maybe. And I stop myself on the fourth question. Um, do I need to do a trance journey? But my lower self or something in me uh, resisted that. I put up some resistance because um, I'm always nervous I'm that that won't work uh, quite right. And I, I feel a little... Um, doubt um, about doing that. But the vibrations were so strong that um, before I knew it, I did. I was um, on a really short uh, trance journey, and I just imagined, visualized a face from a television show, a television show we'd seen recently. And then I let it go with the uh, kind of the leap of faith required that I, I was probably resisting that leap of faith and letting it go on. And the face began uh, singing the old song, K Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. And the thought came to mind that there is no message. Um, there, there isn't anything certain to do or certain to um, look out for. Whatever will be, will be. And a song I used to uh, play when I was younger came to mind as well. 
and I'll quote a few of the uh, lines from that song. Could it be you make your presence known so often by your absence? Could it be that questions tell us more than answers ever do? Could it be the only answer that means anything is you? And I thought, oh, maybe the message um, is, you, is nothing other than being, resting, um, kind of existing in, in that um, <clears throat> state, that uh, presence, enjoying that presence. Um, and so I've drawn a runestone, a Oham stick, and three tarot cards um, to elaborate for myself, to reflect on this idea. And so um, let me start with the rune. I drew the rune Yira which can mean harvest or reward. And this brought to mind the idea, what is our reward? What are we working for? Why do we want, um, why do we ask the questions we do? Why do we want success in some area? Why do we feel driven to do something. What's going to be our reward? Um, and uh, what if like the Tin Man and the uh, Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion, we already have those things um, within us? And what if the reward we need is the actually the relationships and something of the heart, and we're chasing the wrong things. Um, the Oham stick that I drew was this one, which is, uh, I may pronounce this wrong, a sale, but it stands for the willow tree. And the willow, um, it's associated with the moon growing near the water. And so it's a very um, yin energy or feminine energy in uh, that sense. Um, and it, in this context, it speaks to me of the womb, a gestation period, like that nine month uh, pregnancy, that incubation period of rest when you're not rushing out and doing things not receiving a uh, activating message or a um, plan of action or a battle call, but rather breathing in. So this did tie in with some of the tarot cards that I drew. The first one, and uh, these are from the Archeon Tarot, And the first one was the Ace of Cups. And I immediately thought of uh, the deep drinking, drinking in of the heart, kind of streaming love, finding that alignment, that center, that connection. Now it could be a worship, it could be that potion that you drink, that healing potion, that intoxicating drink, um, that sustenance of the heart, though. And the shadow of this, the, uh, this card kind of uh, depicts the shadow. You see some masks there, and the little white book of the Archeon Tarot 
says that affairs of the heart lead to intrigue at the masquerade. So on the shadow side, the, the heart can be deceptive above all things, can't it, with the, um, the imagination we see played out in something like the Seven of Cups and things like that, the moon card. But um, it's that call to drink deeply in that potential, that deep uh, place in the heart chakra. And um, in the, I think the Hindu word means untouched, that sacred space that is unwounded and untouched um, there to find, to come back to that center. Very important. The next card I drew was the Five of Cups. And this spoke to me of the typical meaning of sorrow and sadness. But in this case, um, how this kind of uh, shows us what when we've been chasing the wrong thing, um, doing things for the wrong purpose, we can become, uh, when we get too attached to some material thing or to some temporal thing, um, we can cry over that spilt milk. And uh, I'm reminded of the tarot of vampires version of the card, the um, sorrowful shapeshifter here. She has the tattoo of the inverted uh, pentacle that we see on the devil card, where material things have taken the upper hand. And this can lead us to you see the cracked cistern that can't hold the liquid anymore here. So we're looking to things, um, maybe the old wine skins that uh, can't hold the wine anymore. We need new wine and new wine skins. Or the um, uh, It's slipping my mind. Snake skins that, that need to be shed. The towers that need to fall. Seasons ending. Um, people who leave places we must leave. Um, bring this sorrow. And the third card I drew so appropriately was death. So um, much the same thing on the art type level here. And so this spoke to me of death to ego, which is a key phrase from the Archeon Tarot little white book. So the, these false or temporary um, selves that we set up, the identities we have that um, we become too attached to, maybe we become uh, defensive and when they don't work or when they fall apart, we go through that grieving process and have to let go. Um, I remember an example um, that came to my mind when I had been a teacher for many, many years and I had taught in China for um, several years and I decided to go to language school to learn a little Chinese. Um, but when my role shifted from teacher to student, um, there was a, a death to identity and that kind of respect and, and things that I had been accustomed to um, was inverted, was overturned. And so I had to let go of that. And it was a good, uh, such a good, Thing to become a learner and um, to have to come back to center in that way. And 
to come back to connection and to come back to alignment. So I will stop there, um, but that's my reflections on when source is the message and we need to come back to that. Again, whether it's a sacred space or just a place of mindfulness, um, the sanctuary. So for Hemingway, it, uh, in his existentialism, it was a clean, well-lighted place, if you remember the short story. And so uh, you may not use the imagery I do in my personified deity, but I think it's an important um, life uh, process nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you feel connection with people in your life, with online community, and on your spiritual path, whatever that might be. Take care.